Hey guys, it's Rob Sipek with Paperless X, a channel that is dedicated to helping you discover the best apps for your business, education, productivity, creativity, and lifestyle. In today's video, we'll be going through Google Calendar for the iPad. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know each time we release a new video. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. Google Calendar is a free planning and calendar app from Google. You can use it for tracking your events, tasks, reminders, and goals. The app has a web app that you can access from any device, and it also has a mobile version for your iPad and iPhone. In this video, we will be focusing on the iPad version of the application. This calendar is linked to your Gmail account, of course. Google Calendar has four views you need to be aware of. Schedule day, week, and month. We will get into the details of these a bit later. What you need to understand for now is that your landing page can be any of these depending on where you left off when you closed the application. For each of these views, except for the month view, you get this calendar on the left. Your landing page has four icons. Starting from the upper left corner, you have the three bar icon for navigation, Toggle icon on your month for toggling away the month calendar. You also get a calendar icon to jump to the current date. And you also have a plus icon for creating new events, tasks, reminders, and goals. When you create a new event, you can add a title for your event, set the starting date and time, add end time to set the end date and time for your event. Under more options, you can choose a time zone, select repeating options, which could be every day, every week, every month, or every year. And you can also customize your repeats to every couple of days, weeks, months, or years, depending on your preferences. Your task can repeat every 1 to 99 days, 1 to 52 weeks on specific days of the week. 1 to 36 months on the same day or specific day of each month. 1 to 30 years. Once every 30 years, that's something, isn't it? We all know exactly what we want to do 30 years from now. Google Calendar's got us covered. You can also select when your custom repeating will end, doesn't end, on a date for your task to end on a specific date. Or you could let your task repeating end after a number of occurrences. You can invite people to your event via Gmail and allow your guests to add other people. You can also add video conferencing via Google Meet. You can add a location for your event. This app will put a photo of your location if it has photos in Google's database. If Google has a photo of that location in its database, then the application will add a photo or the app will just add a map if there are no photos for that location. When you long press on the image or map, you have options to remove photos or maps and show in maps. You can set notification time for your events. So you can set 10 minutes before, 30 minutes, an hour, a week as an email. If you want to receive an email a week before your event, you can do that. You can also customize the time that you want to be reminded. Your notification time and customize minutes, hours, days or weeks you can choose to get a notification or an email and you can also set up up to five notifications in google calendar if you miss the first one surely you have no excuse for missing the fourth or fifth notification right google calendar is just trying to make sure that you are where you're supposed to be the default color for your event will help you make some important events stand out by using a different color for them or if you are extra, like Uncle Dan in the studio, only God knows why, um, you can have a different color for every event on your calendar. You can add a description for your event. You can attach files from your Google Drive. We managed to attach up to 10 files in Google Calendar. What are the chances you will need more than that? In case your event is more elaborate than ours, you can add more than 10 attachments to your event. The cool thing about your attachments in Google Calendar is that you can attach anything in your Google Drive. It could be movies, audio files, documents, and even zipped files. 
If you don't mind being stuck in the Google ecosystem, then you will love using Google Calendar because you can attach anything from Google Drive. This can be quite a limitation that they should be able to offer those that want to attach files that are on their computers and other cloud services. You can set your event visibility to public, calendar default or private. Public means anyone with access to your calendar can see the event, but on private, only your attendees can see the event. When your events show as busy, that slot in your calendar is no longer available for other people to invite you for events. But when you mark your event as available, people can invite you for their events during that time. By default, every event you create shows as busy, which makes sense, doesn't it? You then save your event when you're done and it gets added to your calendar. You can edit, delete, duplicate and copy the event to another calendar when you are signed in to multiple calendars. You can also create a new event by simply tapping any free spot on your calendar. Google Calendar can double as a task managing app. You can create a task in the app just like you do in Google Tasks. The tasks you add to your Google Calendar automatically appear in Google Tasks and vice versa. If you've not seen the video we've done on Google Tasks, we'll have a link to it in the description down below. You can mark your tasks as completed, but nothing happens to the way they look on your monthly view. But you can see it on other views, so other views will show you if your task has been completed. Your events usually involve a lot of people. They are also fixed. So for example, you might have a meeting. If you miss this meeting, that's it. Reminders are those things you want to remember to do because for some reason you keep forgetting them. Call Jane to catch up with her. For example, your reminder will get pushed forward until you call her and mark your reminder as done. You can create a reminder in Google Calendar. Set a date and time for it. And you can also make your reminder repeat every day, every week, every month, every year. And you can customize your repeats just like you do with your events. You can set goals for different aspects of your life in Google Calendar. Exercise, friends and family, me time. It doesn't matter what goal you choose. The options you get are similar for all the goals in the application. You can choose how often you do this task to meet your goal. So it could be once or twice a month, once, twice, three to five times a week. You can not customize these frequency options. They are limited to the options that they offer you in the application, but they're enough, aren't they? There is a bit of something for everyone. Next, you can decide how long you want to spend on that goal. The time options depend on how often you do the goal. Um, the less frequent, the longer your individual sessions. If you do something once a month, you can do it for up to the whole day, for example. But if you do something every day, then you could do it for a maximum of two hours. Let's hope in the future they could give us a way to customize our duration for these things. They can allow us to have a bit more control on the duration of our frequencies. You can also decide the best time for you, whether you want to be doing this goal in the morning, afternoon, evening or any time. You can choose to get notified before it's time to complete the day's goal. And you have smart notifications to help you prepare and track your progress. A good goal has a time frame. You might want to study for two hours every day for a week or a month, for example. And that makes it easier to evaluate your progress, especially if you have targets to meet. In that way, this feature is a bit incomplete in Google Calendar. Let's hope that they can improve this. This would be a very great habit tracker for those of us that don't like using planners. Now we'll focus on the four views that we've already spoken about at the beginning of this video. The schedule view displays everything in your days as lists. This view only shows the dates that you've planned for only. It's quite useful if you just want to see what you need to do and you don't want to see your full calendar. The day view shows your scheduled items for the day. Scroll to the left or right to see plans for the previous and the next day. The week view shows your week starting from your chosen first day of the week. Your all day events go to the top of the calendar below your dates. You can navigate to the day view by tapping the date in this week. 
and you can switch between the day view and schedule by tapping on the date. This sort of gives Google Calendar a digital planner feel, uh, but unfortunately, once you've exited the week view, there's no quick way to get back to it. So all the three views that we've spoken about, they have this calendar, which you can hide anytime you want. The month view will show your calendar at a glance and you can scroll through your months horizontally. Hopefully they can give us an option for vertical scrolling. It's always better to have a continuation of some sort. Sometimes it helps to see the previous week and the first week of the next month. In this view, you can't differentiate your completed tasks from incomplete ones. You should be able to see what you've completed or if Google Calendar can't strike out what we've completed, that should at least remove it from the month view. Google Calendar does not have a year view. Google Calendar has two widgets for your upcoming events and tasks. If you use Google Calendar and you're invested in the application, it will help to just see your upcoming events without opening the application. You can search through your past and future events in Google Calendar. Navigating through your results is very straightforward and you can quickly edit anything you want. You can filter what shows on your calendar by ticking the checkboxes for each of these. You can choose to see your events, tasks. When you have a lot going on in your calendar, it helps to uncheck items. So you can just focus on maybe just your reminders or events. Now let's go through the calendar settings in the application. Under general, you can choose the start of week, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. You can turn on use device time zone, or you can choose your own time zone. You can use alternative calendars and Google Calendar has eight of those for you to choose from. You can turn on week number, show declined events, but to keep your calendar less cluttered, we suggest you turn this off. I mean, you declined the event, why do you need to see it? You can show month illustrations, but when turned off, your calendar is plain and boring. You can show events, illustrations, these are not bad. Still, the minimalist in me prefers plain colors. However, Google Calendar doesn't have illustrations for all events you create, especially if your event is very unique to you and very specific. It seems to have illustrations for common events. You can set default event duration so that every time you create an event, your application will just know all your events last two hours or an hour. So you don't have to keep setting that every time you create a new event. And you can turn on add video conferencing. You can turn on add events from Gmail to get your plans from your Gmail automatically added to your Google Calendar. You can decide the visibility of these events for other people. And turning off this setting, you delete all your previously added events and Gmail will no longer automatically add events to your Google Calendar. You can use some universal settings for your events, tasks, and reminders. For all three, you can choose a default color for how they look on your calendar. You have the same color options for all of these. You can also choose colors for your birthdays and holidays too. The birthdays that appear in Google Calendar are synced with your Gmail contacts. So if you wish to add a birthday to your calendar, you have to update your contact information. You can choose your holidays based on country and religion. Under manage accounts, you can turn on accounts whose plans you want to see in your calendar. So Google Calendar will allow you to see your plans for different gmail accounts and this brings us to the end of this video give this video a thumbs up if you liked it fantastic human thank you so much for watching see you in the next video